Welcome back, South Philly Sauce and Odyssey Original, brought to you by 94 WIP and Jack Daniels, Ashlyn Sullivan, Al Morgani, here with you. And, oh, it has been a frustrating week for the Flyers. I'm still not over the whirlwind of emotions that was the last game the Flyers played. They, thank goodness, get a point in overtime, or else the playoff picture would just be blown to the wind. But Morgan Frost, the inconsistencies with him, when you see him go from a hero to costing the team the game in overtime out so much going on and it's so frustrating when you go back and watch John Torrell's post-game press conference because he's spot on everything he says is so truthful with how that team played yeah well Ashton it, 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 it's a crazy time of year so you really when you start to pull it apart it's maddening for the Flyers but then look at it from the Islanders side they had they had two points wrapped up and no points for the Flyers, who they're chasing down. And Frost scores a goal late. So they manage to win the game, but the Flyers get one point. So Frost, like you said, it's like out of nowhere, scores that huge goal. And you're thinking, this is it. This is this is an unbelievable comeback to come. And then he mishandles a bad Drysdale pass on in the uh, in the 3 on 3 overtime. But still, he shouldn't lose the puck. And he coughs it up, basically. And the Islanders get two points. You get one point. And you're left, it you know, cover this team a long time. There aren't many games where the swings were just so dramatic in a game. Yeah. And you're left, how do I feel? <laughs> right. I can decide how, how, I how I feel. How am I supposed to feel after this game? There were some good points, some bad points. It felt bad at the end, but you came back at the end of the game. It's like it's just uh it's it, it's just a tremendous salad of emotions that you go through late in the season. And then to top it all off. John Tortorella th throws spices on everything at oh the my end. Gosh. So, so you right left one, you know, is this thing, you know, where, where are you heading now the rest of the season? You're, you're like, you've, you've had such, so many, so many good feelings through this season. And then just the, the emotions of that, that one game uh, had, had so many things happen that if you were a fan, you're just totally wrung out at the end of the game. You're exhausted. And I think when you look forward now as the Flyers are, you know, barely in the playoffs holding on for dear life after that Islanders game. And thank goodness they get that overtime point or you would have put a, basically a spear in the playoffs. But I think as I'm thinking about how I feel now going forward into the season, and we've heard all week long how fatigued they are, how tired they are. And to me, especially when you look at that second period, when you have a new goaltender go in, Fedotov, 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 I say it wrong every time. We're trying to get it right. And you just, you don't see any spunk. You don't see any life come back into this team. And that's what Torts is freaking out about at the end of the game. To me, it just looks like a team. It's like, do you want to be in the playoffs or not? Because you don't act like it. You're not showing it right now at this point of the season, which is so concerning. Yeah, and that was the <clears throat> that was our concern going in. You got an enormous boost. Fedotov comes in <laughs> and... It's unexpected, right? At the end of the first period, Erson struggled again in the first period. I thought gave up one really bad goal, and yeah. he doesn't start. And it really was an emotional lift. You could feel it in the building. It's like, wow, look at this. I mean, in the first place, the guy's enormous. So it's like just for the fans at home to have this happen at home. This guy's first game, he comes out, go, oh my God, look at the size of this guy coming out to play goal by, you know, six foot seven. You know, there are in the league some guys that are big, but for the in Flyers history, this guy's just a giant coming out mm -hmm. and playing goal. And he played remarkably well, but the Flyers were awful. They got one goal and a tremendous coast-to-coast -coast by Sanheim early in the period. But then despite the great goaltending, which should have given you a lift, it just thing, everything came apart for them. And it, well, they were lucky that he played that well to keep them in that game in that second period. And I think that's what set John Tortorella off. It's like, and frankly, look, it set all of us off. Um, mm -hmm. we, we were like, What's going on here? Despite the fact the goalie's playing so well, what's happened to this team? It's a it's it's a mess, and they did manage to regroup in that in that third. But I think uh, the message was sent pretty clear. But Ashton, I'll tell you, uh, <laughs> I'm a little, I I really like John Tortorella as a coach. He's a really good hockey coach, and he he kind of walks that fine line when he's dealing with how to deal with the team's emotions in a locker room. And he's brought this group around tremendously. Uh, made him very cognizant of things they have to do, held them accountable as the word is. But when he said the team was soft, 
I was like, whoa, that's a, that's a word in hockey that's um, it's not good. You don't <laughs> throw a, it around. It's yeah, a, it, it's the four letter word you don't want to hear. Soft <laughs> in hockey, and 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 he, I think as I think as he said, I think he realized it because he said. Then again, we came back in the third period and played, you know, a much a much better game, much much stronger game. But uh, but that is an that that sends alarm bells off, and it and it really it, it's to me a risky thing to to say when you've got some veteran players there. But it, it it's hard to criticize buttons that he's pushed this year, because it seems like when he pushes a button, some people, m- me included, at times will think, uh oh, that's the panic button, and it isn't. It turns out mm-hmm. to just be the right button to get things going at that time. But this one here, I'm real curious to see what the reaction is going to be after that post-game presser. And I get it. But see, I loved it because I think any fan watching at home agrees with John Torella after watching that performance that it was soft. And how can you go at this point of the season and lose to the Chicago Blackhawks and lose to Montreal and then have this game be so close against the Islanders when you were in a must-win situation. If I'm a Flyers fan right now, I'm like, do you even want to be in the playoffs? Do you even want to turn the season around? So I didn't blame him at all for saying it. And we're trying to dissect and figure out what players he's really talking about because he elaborates in that post-game press conference. Players do not have a clue how to play or just don't have it in them to play in these types of situations. And I went to you and the post game show thinking, because I think every fan is thinking, well, who's he talking about? And we can't guess. And we're probably not going to know, ever know the answer, but he is signaling out to specific players because then when he elaborated and went back saying that the team fought back in the third period, he went on to say actually only a couple players fought back in the third period. Yeah. So it was, it was like, he, I, I didn't want to go to that next step, so to speak, because I mean, there are young players there. I mean, I mean, you can criticize Frost, but he did score the big goal going right. in. Zamula, Zamula had a really, really rough game, really rough mm-hmm. game. Farabee didn't have the greatest game. You know, uh, so, you, I mean, you can go up and down the lineup, but you, the, the message is sent to the entire team. The, I think the problem, Ashlyn, as a fan, as, as somebody watching, as a critic, you, you're like, how can you have that kind of a period? But if you just roll back a day or two, and it's the coach and the coaching staff saying the team looks exhausted. It looks mm-hmm. fatigued. It looks tired. Well, if you've sent that message, it's hard to then send a message. Where were they? Well, maybe they were tired. <laughs> <laughs> because, but that that see that's that's the issue there. It's like I, I don't understand one against the other. Yeah. Um, like like I, I I was like, why would you say? Why would you even give? The I excuse. guess you can make the argument. You know, you don't have to use your excuses. But if there's an excuse out there, it's like, okay, you, you, what do you expect? You told these guys that they're tired. And, and so then it came up with looked like a fatigued effort at times. So Big I think that, that's where there's a bit of a disconnect there. And I, frankly, if you told me which one did you not like more or did you like less, I guess is the English way to say it, I, I would say it was telling them that they're tired, using, a, you know, having a built-in excuse, if you will. But right. built an excuse that they're tired. So I mean, that's why I was a little, per- I was a little like, which one is it? I mean, right, that's if, confusing. If, yeah, if if if, the, if your core players are exhausted, then then the next day you say, oh, I didn't play hard. I'm like, well, they're exhausted. Right, so, and you that, told us we could be. Yeah, that's uh, not, see. I think if I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gone on that route. If, um, but you know, he's going to the Hall of Fame as a coach. He's pushed every right button this year. And you did see Sanheim come up with that and, uh, you know, change the power play a little bit. So, I mean, I, I we'll, we'll see how it plays out. I don't think with a bunch of young players like this, there's that risk of, quote, losing the locker room. I don't think so. Uh, and so, and, and, you know, they've already proven their point for this year. But I think you, you might lose it short term here just for a few days. And maybe it's a response you wanted to come back and everybody get mad and play really hard the next game. You hope so. And I mean, they need to spark something because the past three games, it has been lackadaisical. It has looked fatigue. And I think that's where John Torella is coming from because it's so unlike him to even bring out the tired card. But if you watch, especially the defensemen's play, yeah, they looked gassed. They look tired. They look like they need a couple of days off, which they're not going to get at this point of the season. So right now it's just trying to manage it, but they keep going back to that will within that game against the Islanders. Yeah. 
I didn't see a lot of will. Yeah, I see. He, you know, he suggested fatigued. And to my eyes, this is what you were worried about early in the season when teams play harder at the end of a team like the Islanders plays harder than they did earlier in the year. Um, the Flyers couldn't coast at any point. Uh, they were just, they overachieved. They have yeah. overachieved for most of the season by hitting every, every cylinder on virtually every game. But now you've got teams that are in it and uh, with a few more veteran players, they've been through it a little more before. And I think that's where you saw the Islanders come up and, and play that different kind of a game. And, that's why for them, it's got to be maddening. I don't know what was worse. If I was an Islander fan or if I'm the Islanders, I think it was more critical that you let the Flyers have a point with like 10 seconds to go than it is that you got the two. Because if, if you're, this is a long way for the Islanders to chase. And if they don't catch the Flyers by a point, it's Morgan Frost that cost them a playoff spot. <laughs> Which that that ten no probably fifteen second period of Morgan Frost yeah. is the oh. perfect description of Morgan Frost's year. I mean, could you think of anything to go from as high as high to as low as low in a matter of seconds? We couldn't believe no, it. We we spun our chairs around on set. I was like, I cannot we, believe that just happened. Yeah, you see the pass coming over, and you know, okay, it's not tape to tape, but just do you know, protect do, do something. something. Yeah. And it's it go it goes the other way, boom! A pass over, a nice shot beats a, a goaltender that was terrific, beats him, and and you saw Frost's body language afterwards, it's oh. like I mean, he I'm he toast. knew it too. Like he's I I I mean, you know, post if it was post game and they get through that, he's like everybody's talking Morgan Frost. This is a big moment come through. Couturier went down with injury. Frost comes in, scores this enormous goal late. Maybe this is the point where he you know he, he turns it around even further, gets more more than what we've been expecting of him. And instead it's like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my mistake. gosh. That's all you can say. <laughs> it's like a slap of the head. Oh my gosh. I can't believe that just happened. But there was a lot that happened in that game that actually was pretty good, which we haven't talked enough about, which is Fedotov, which he coming into that game, he was only with the Flyers for four official days, get thrown into this game in the deep end and highly succeeds. Now we're excited about this guy. We're probably going to see him more this weekend. You feel for Sam Harrison. He has been playing the greatest, especially for what he's been through this year. But that's what I hope people give him the benefit of the doubt is Sam Harrison was never supposed to be in this position. And you're seeing a little bit of a dip in play, but he's been playing nonstop for the past months. Yeah, that's where I think you can really look at mental fatigue. Um, yeah. You know, if you're in good shape, that's fine. But the when you're a goaltender at this point of season this and then in a playoff race like this, it, everything's overtime. I mean, you're basically playing 60 minutes overtime. And then if you have to do overtime, overtime, that's the way it feels. And I think that that mental pressure, that's what you have to learn to, to get through. I mean, it's, it's weird because sometimes really young players play through it because they frankly don't understand it, how big it is first time round. It's like, oh, well, just another game. But then as you're in the league longer and the free, you see the pressures build to get in the playoffs, got to make that big save. And I think Harrison's going went through a little bit that he a little bit of that. He did look, it, it, I can only say mentally fatigued for some of the goals that he's given up recently with one really bad one. The second goal by the Islanders in that, in that game was really a bad goal in my opinion to see that happen. But now you bring in a goalie, Badotov, and he was terrific. I mean, I don't know, maybe it, is it a, you hope it's not just, you know, one hit wonder comes in and, you know, plus the Islanders have never seen him before. So, right. you know, they don't know, they don't know what, you know, what to expect, where to go. They probably haven't seen much video or whatever. It's a big, huge goaltender. And he made two big saves on Barzell coming in right into the game. And even more than that, I was, um, yeah, the goalie, the primary goal is obviously stop the puck, but he handled the puck like a veteran NHL goaltender and better than 50% already. I mean, mm -hmm. sent it scaling a puck to, all the way down ice on a key situation, clearing the zone, no panic. I'm like, wow, that told me as much of, that he's not worried about it or nervous about it. Remember, I mean, we think of the NHL, it's obviously the best league in the world, but there are pressures playing in Olympics, playing in world championships, playing in the K, all that stuff comes with a, a, a certainly a, a, a big game feels. Now, these rinks are different. The traffic in front is different. Uh, all of that is different. But the fact that he he didn't throw up all of himself handling the puck 
That mm-hmm. to me told me this is a guy that the nerves are not going to be an issue. Right. And we're most likely we'll see him. We were going to see him anyway, most likely either Friday or Saturday as the Flyers get ready for a back to back situation. So you get him a little bit earlier, but we're still expecting most likely to see him at one point this weekend. And now let's go to a little playoff update. And depending on when you're listening to this podcast, it's probably going to change even more so. So the Flyers, they're back in that third place in the Metro. But truthfully, Al, I don't know for how much longer with the way they're playing and the way the Capitals are playing. It's a night and day difference right now. I think you have to assume as of right now, the Flyers are fighting for a wild card spot, which means now all eyes will turn to the Detroit Red Wings. Yeah, and a weird schedule quirk. They're also off like the Flyers till the end of the week. And they got, mm-hmm. you know, they played Florida and Tampa and got points. And this is where it was dangerous to look ahead and say, okay, Flyers are playing Chicago, Montreal. Uh, they, should be, they should get four points. They're not going to get anything. And, and yeah. then, you know, you look at Detroit and they go, oh, Tampa, it's going to be a mess. Well, they end up winning the game. Uh, and so that's where it's really dangerous to look ahead at what's going on it now. But now it gets interesting because now you're going to see the, the, the Red Wings face that the have to win type of thing. It's it's almost like watching watching in the NBA. When you watch teams, you, you come back against a team, but you better take the lead because if you almost get there, things fall apart easily. It's like when you watch a tennis match, somebody's down you know, 4-0 and comes back 4-4, you better go up 5-4 four, four, or it's all for naught. So the pressure becomes on the Red Wings now, in my opinion, to like doors open. Let's see if yeah. you can't go through it. Much like the Flyers, doors open, won't go through it. So I know it looks like a turtle race right now with these teams, you know, who's going to grab this thing. But uh, you, I, I, I do think Washington's in pretty good shape, amazingly, without Tom Wilson once again. Everybody, including me, thinking, well, without Wilson, they'll struggle. Nope, they go ahead. So it's a, uh, it's, it's, it never makes sense in this league at the end of the year. And uh, you want to hope now that Detroit starts to feel that pressure right now. You hope so, especially when you look at the Flyers' schedule going forward. We mentioned that back to back. So the Capitals, they're going to see Buffalo early midweek, um, and that's on the road. And then the Flyers go to play Buffalo. Friday night who have been playing better those Sabres and then they have a game against Columbus on Saturday and even when we looked at the schedule we we looked at Buffalo we're like all right you know that could be a tough one but all these other games should be okay well now we're in your position we joke about must wins all the time if you do not win on Friday or Saturday forget it yeah well and Buffalo is a if I'm a fan of the Sabres I almost hope that they lose out the rest of the year because they do this every year <laughs> Well, because they come in, they come in and say, they, everybody says, this is the year they're going to break through and they start okay or whatever. They look all right. And then at the end of the, and then they go in the tank and look like they're doomed. And then they have this life at the end of the year to set you up. Well, next year will be the year. Well, it, it never is. So, yeah. so I mean, that, that, that will be in. And, but that's what, and that's the danger the Flyers have a Buffalo team that at the end of the year starts to make it look like, well, we're on the right path again. And all it is is, you know, about path to nowhere when the next season starts. <laughs> so yes, needless to say, it is an entertaining time for the Flyers right now. Every single week, it's a roller coaster of this season. So thanks for tuning in for South Philly Sauce and Odyssey Original, brought to you by 94WIP and Jack Daniels. We will see you later on this week.